So welcome everyone to the monthly mashup. This was supposed to happen in January, but I couldn't get all the girls together. And in fact, I normally have Sally from Queen Bee Styling on here and Sarah from Sartoria Lab, but Sarah couldn't make it sadly. So we're not the, I think of us as the three Charlie's Angels of the styling world. <laughs> and we're, we're just down to, two, we're just down to two this week. We're glamorous. We're well dressed and we're good at <laughs> solving crimes. <laughs> totally right. Crimes, crimes against style. Crimes <laughs> against style, exactly. <laughs> um, so we're just doing a monthly mashup. It's a merge between January and February. And this is when we get together and talk about things that we've noticed we want to talk about related to style, things that are going on. This is a bit of a workwear special this time. We're going to be talking about workwear in 2023 what we predict what's going on how people are dressing in the workplace at the moment because obviously everything has changed since the pandemic so welcome Sally thank you for joining me hi thanks for having me back and uh hello Sarah if you're listening she will be listening at some point hopefully she can join us next time so I wanted to start off with we're going to be talking about the apprentice we're going to be doing workwear recommendations for a work wardrobe also we're going to be talking a little bit at the end about love island because they've announced that they might be making a middle-aged love island which is quite interesting and i would like to just discuss that but first workwear the apprentice this year's series 2023 and it started yeah it started in 2023 they're still wearing the same corporate clothes that they wore exactly the same since 2015 when the program began now, I don't see this kind of work where anywhere and our clients are professional people who work lots of them in corporate environments professional environments and I at the moment am clearing this kind of this kind of clothing out of wardrobes because it's dated but all of the cast of The Apprentice are wearing you know block color shift dresses from early 2000s and what is that about that that's my question I just wonder what you thought well I agree with you I don't know why they have decided to go for that that sort of dress for the apprentice because it's certainly not what's happening in um any offices that are you know of clients that I, I deal with and and that actually it does look out of date now so I've got clients who work in law and in financial services and they both say that, you know, this, the bodycon sort of colour, you know, block colour dresses and the heels just look wrong. And people that are wearing that just look a little bit out of touch. And I don't think that's a good thing. So I'm really surprised that they've decided to, to use that dress. I think the only thing I can think of is it's a directive from Alan Sugar. And that's, you know, he's... he's um, old fashioned and wants a certain type of look from his candidates and they have to keep him happy because yeah it's certainly not happening in terms of the workplace at all I think workplaces relax and even though it I think even before the pandemic it was relaxing I think the pandemic has just made it sort of go a bit further and a bit wider so even more conservative industries like law have definitely relaxed and I think there is, a, there is a bit of a smartening up that's happening now. I think there's a lot of tailoring around and things are getting a bit crisper. But I still think that it's not looking like, you know, the heels and the, the, the fitted shift dresses like before. It's definitely, it might be, it's still smart. Some of it's coming back and it's looked smart, but it's it's definitely different and, and not the same as that. So, yeah, I, yeah. I would like to know what that's all about. I mean, I've I've got a theory, which is because I am married to a TV producer and I did say to him, I was like, what, what, why are they dressing the same as they did in 2015? I find it bizarre. You'd think it would move on. But apparently, yeah. like, you know, what you said about Sir Alan Sugar, he has, if anyone had dared to be a bit more kind of expressive with their clothes in the boardroom he kind of singled them out and took the mickey out of them and sort of, oh, you, know, right. you know, what you're wearing kind of, you know, did say that. Um, yeah. But my theory is that the producers, because it pr producing a show, you know, you, you are throwing yourself to the wolves if you go on any kind of reality show, because the producers are making a programme, they're making good television. If it's all very straight laced, 
you know, and all of that, it's not going to make good television. But what they've done is they've kind of, they sort of alienate the candidates, I think, in a way by dressing them like throwbacks or like they make them unrelatable. Yeah. So, you know, I think that they're all a bunch of, I mean, I don't, I don't know what word to use really, but, you know, <laughs> they're, they're kind in of like circles, <laughs> not the sort of people I would want to work with on a daily no. basis, all that, you know. I I am the James Bond of the boardroom. I think one of them said. I know I just said we were the Charlie's Angels, but I was actually <laughs> joking. He meant that. He actually meant that. And then this other the other girl said she was the Kim Kardashian of the boardroom. And that, you know they would sell their grandmother, all of that kind of yeah. stuff. So I think it's a it's a deliberate yeah. tactic to make them unrelatable for for the audience to kind of hate them a bit. Yeah. Until, I I think yeah that that does make sense but also I think um you know as as both women running our own businesses I did think because the apprentice is like you said been around for ages I mean I thought that business like to be an entrepreneur like business owner you did have to be like the apprentice and and ne- like obviously since setting up my own business and meeting other people it's refreshing to know that there are people aren't like that you know and I think that would that that sort of forceful pushy salesy person there's definitely a place for it but I I don't think that really it's representative of generally people in business or women in business you know from from a dress point of view but also from a personality point of view so I think it does feel the whole format just feels a bit tired and a bit like it needs an update I'd say because it's just it doesn't reflect how society is. I think, you know, the workplace should be a bit kinder and less aggressive and, um, you know, a bit more inclusive of different personality types. And it, it you know, I don't think that show shows that at all because they're all, they're all kind of peas in the same pod to a certain extent, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, and, and that's how they sort of frame them, isn't it, as these kind of mm-hmm. nasty backstabbers who will just do anything to get this job to elbow everyone else out the way and all of that but yeah a lot of people are feeling that that format is quite tired but I mean I can see why people get confused about how to dress at work at the moment I've one of my NCT friends hello Kat if you're listening she has she started a new job in quite a corporate environment um and no one she said everyone is wearing jeans and no one is wearing jackets they're wearing jeans and flat shoes I was quite surprised by that my feeling is don't I've got this saying don't dress down or don't dress badly just because everyone else is right mm-hmm. I I just think you should I still like a you know a jacket I think any wardrobe benefits from having a selection of jackets because you just look pulled together I mean I don't think you should dress completely casually in the workplace this is the other extreme to the apprentice so I mean what do you think is going to be happening with 2023 work work. you said it's freshening up it's sharpening up a bit yeah I think it I think it went through a very relaxed stage post pandemic and I I, when when I say I mean every industry is different but if I'm thinking of places like you know banking law I suppose what were traditionally sort of the the I suppose the more formal wear dressed industries um I there it, I think it went really relaxed, but I think now it's coming back and sharpening up a little bit with tailoring. So things like wide leg trousers, slightly crisper shirts. So you know the whole shirting thing is coming back. So I think um, I think that's that is happening. But I think um, I, I agree with you. I, I, we obviously deal with people that are probably more of a management level. And I think if you want to project seniority or, you know, if you're going for promotion, I think you do need to look authoritative and sort of dress the part. So I think, you know, you can't really, it's it's easy to do that if you're dressed up. So to a certain extent. So I think it's finding the right balance between looking relaxed and not out of kilt with the rest of the team around you but looking smart enough and sharp enough and pulled together enough that you sort of command some sort of authority as well and it you know can be done but it does take a little bit of thought and consideration and I think before what we were saying about it was easier to do because you just put on your shift dress and your heels and you were there now 
it's not quite so easy. So you need to think about the different combinations. But I think, you know, things like tailoring are great and you can sort of mix things up a little bit, you know, that high sort of high low dressing, that sort of thing. I think it's finding a few combinations that work for you and then just sort of playing with them. Well, Sarah posted actually the um Sarah, who's usually on the podcast with us on the monthly mashup, she posts on LinkedIn about uh, there's an article in Mr. Porter, I think, at the moment, enclosed cognition which I've spoken about on the podcast before but you know how um when you wear something that makes you feel elevated at work you just you know you you project that image but you feel it too and then that makes you more productive so you know clothes 100 percent can change how you feel and I just think do not you know I, I don't want to get to a point where everyone's wearing super super casual clothes because I love mm. tailoring I love jackets, all those sorts of things. Tailoring is definitely at the moment, if you're a the more fashionista type, more you know, trendy, everything is really oversized. So oversized blazers, oversized shirting, lots of striped shirting at the moment. Yeah. Big baggy black trousers, you know, everything kind of dragging on the floor, that kind of thing. That's and mm. suits as well. So, you know, oversized suits that, with trainers, that's a really cool look at the moment but if you are you know if you're in working in law chambers or wherever else you're working then you might want to bring the tailoring in a bit more and not go you know because the oversized look is quite a really sort of fashiony yeah sort of look um but I would say definitely every wardrobe work wardrobe needs some tailoring yeah I I would agree like you say whether or not it's trousers or a blazer and I, and again I think that comes back to smart casual dressing or you know whatever you call it relaxed dressing I've they had a thing in the paper the other day where it was called demi corporate so whatever you want to call it it's kind of that whole mix up of smart casual so um, not looking overly formal and I think mixing one piece of tailoring in with other pieces is a great way to get that sort of balance and funny I've got an article that I did pre-pandemic about you know looking professional in a relaxed work dress code is one of the ones that comes up you know is one of the most popular ones that I've written because I think people do struggle with that so I think a good way of getting around that is just to remember it is smart casual and yeah so if you've got a blazer that looks nicer with jeans if you're, you know, a jeans office and, uh, you know, tailored trousers will look nicer with a sweater. So I think that's yes. kind of a good way of mixing it up. Definitely. It's a recipe, isn't it? So if you wear, obviously, if you wear like, a, you know, tailored jacket, tailored trousers suit and everything's fitted, then that's 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 pretty, for, that's formal. But like you say, if you mix it up and maybe you could do, if you can wear jeans in your office, then just wear that with a tailored blazer. So you've got the smart is the blazer, the casual is the jeans. So it's just like you say, it's that balance, isn't it? And then having yeah. the right pieces because you don't also you don't want to look too formal, which is what the apprentice lot are. Yeah, I, have to say, I haven't actually watched anymore. I think I only watched one episode. I didn't watch. I just saw the publicity where the, the, the Internet went, the social media went nuts about because um, Lorraine Candy wrote an article in Grazia and oh. she called it Barbie. What I didn't I saw it online. It was, she called it Barbie dressing or something, which created a, a storm and I I get that it looks out of place but I wouldn't necessarily call it Barbie because I don't think that that is the reason that people dress like that is not because they you know they're not that sort of Barbie character at all if anything I just think they're probably a little bit lost and don't know how to update and it's a safe bet so yeah I don't agree with that but yeah there was a whole big hoo-ha about. Oh, was it boardroom Barbie? Was it that boardroom Barbie? That was it. Yeah. Yes. I don't agree with I don't agree with that term at all because I know as probably the same as you. I go into wardrobes and, and edit those sorts of things out, and the people are definitely not you know boardroom Barbies. They're just people that are probably too busy to you know think about it and and have kind of stuck to a formula that's always worked. So, have you got any good work? Where would you recommend for workwear? at the moment uh well I think the stores at the moment are still in transition between the seasons so there's still a lot of markdown out there but I really like COS I have to say I'm a big fan of COS I think their value for money in terms of the fabrics 
and that the quality that you get is good. It's the same for me and M. I think they they're great. I, not not cheap, but I, again, knowing looking at the quality of the garments and how they're made, uh, I think they're really good value for money. Um, me and M are just yeah. I mean they're they're smashing it, aren't they? They're yeah. Just- and quite rightly so, because I just if you if you even look at the attention to detail, like even in the trousers, they've all they've got the taping inside the um, waistbands, which is um, which can add like when I was a buyer, we didn't put those in when I worked at certain stores because you couldn't afford to because it added it adds another like 10, 20 pounds to the cost price. But they've got all of that in. They tape their seams, you know, all of those things help keep the garments in good condition so um and they you know their fabrics do have like a high wall content again that's good for retaining its shape and lasting so i mean it all looks beautiful quality it does it all looks beautiful quality yeah. and yeah they are they you know it's sort of a bit of a higher price point i guess it's higher and higher street but like you're explaining because you used to be a buyer obviously before you um were, had your style in business you know about all of this stuff so i wouldn't see i wouldn't know about that small thing that they put this banding in you know that just makes it that it just elevates the quality of it so you are getting what you pay for yeah definitely it's just like you know men's trousers they most of the you know the good quality ones come with that sort of taping banding inside the waistbands that um okay yeah it's just it's just a sign of quality you know if you like a pair of trousers and it hasn't got it in that's fine too but I'm just thinking if people want some sort of justification for the the price point right. then th- those are the sorts of things that that make a difference and they do help keep the garment structured you don't necessarily need them in all women's trousers though but you know it's just an added attention to detail who do you um, like for work where do you know what? I really like a line so it's a-l-i-g-n-e so I've just online uh, Aline, so a l i g n e. I've just come across them. I've got some trousers from there, black tailored baggy trousers, and they were eighty pounds, which I think is pretty good. And they they've got lovely trousers. They've got really good shirting, sort of workwear. Cause I don't get I don't get along with my own personal style. I I've, nothing really suits me in there. I don't know what it is, but you, I. Yeah. I, I totally get it, but I just think it's, you know, and I think the quality's good and it's cool and all of that. It's that Scandi kind of thing. I just think maybe it's just not my style, but a line I really love. And Do you use a line online, though? Because because have they got, are they in John Lewis now, a line? I'm not sure if they're in John Lewis, actually. I don't know. But I just I've only used online. them on their website. Yeah. So yeah. They, they've got other brands as well, don't they? They run under their umbrella. I think. uh I'm not sure so they've aligned at the moment they've got I mean they've got this amazing denim dress but it's got really exaggerated pointed collars so they'll have like some kind of detail like that so the brand is aligned they're British made as well so I like the fact they're British made I think they're quite good for workwear and I do think man you know Zara do brilliant jackets yeah now this is probably not very sustainable I you know or any of that but they do they do really good blazers really good boucle jackets oh, yeah absolutely brilliant I think and you know sometimes the buttons can look a bit cheap but you could always you could always switch them up yeah um but I'd, yeah, yeah, I'm trying not to advocate good. yeah I'm not advocating fast fashion but you know yeah but then I don't I think with fast fashion I think if you like it and it's going to be in your wardrobe for a ever like it, you know I bought Zara coats years ago and they're still in my wardrobe so okay. I think if you wear something 40 times it's meant to cut down its carbon footprint so I think and then if you consider the fabric then it's sustainable I don't think you I think if you're if you you know we all have certain budgets so we can't all shop at certain places that maybe have more sustainable uh, ranges but if you make considered choices when you are buying and also making sure you're buying something that you can wear lots and it goes with lots in your wardrobe then 
that does that helps to cut down the carbon footprint as well. So, you know, I wouldn't say not to shop in Zara because I think that's not really realistic for the UK population. No, so. no. And it is, you know, there are some great things to be found out there. I actually think Oasis is brilliant as well at the moment. I've, I've been following Rachel Stevens from S Club 7 on Instagram and she's very classic but with a twist and I'm loving her style at the moment I like the things that she has a line with Oasis and that's really quite affordable and I I was going to ask you if there are certain brands that you wouldn't wear are you a label snob I can be a bit of a label snob sometimes and there are certain brands that if I think like they're for older people I won't I won't shop there I have felt like that a bit in the past about M&S M&S gets a bit of a bad rap rap I think sometimes but you know you were telling me as you know from your buyer days the quality is really good yeah so for instance if we take a tailored jacket M&S will take a fabric that um and a, a, a good quality fabric is probably about at least six seven pounds a meter so um and that's it that's an expensive fabric because someone like Primark probably you know paid like 10p a meter or not even that so it's it's quite an expensive fabric so if if you've got that sort of good quality fabric so if it goes into M&S you're probably looking at you know 100 quid a jacket if it went into a smaller uh designer place that, that don't get the benefits of economies of scale and things like that then you'd probably be 200 pounds so I think with m and I mean, clearly the thing is with m and the, the garments go through so many processes that by the time they get to the stores, they they kind of have some some of the life sucked out of them, I feel like a bit more wholesome. But I think if you do like their styles, and I think they're really, really good for Max trench wear again, because they use really good fabrics. They're good for tailoring. Their trouser range at the moment is really good. They've got a, a, a me and them equivalent side stripe, which is brilliant and another couple of wide leg trousers but I wouldn't necessarily go for them for a whole outfit their cashmere is good as well that's their cashmere is really good and actually their men's suiting because they do really nice um they do Italian wool they do Harris tweed as well so they've got actually you know I know they they work with Harris tweed and it's like genuine Harris tweed you know suits and stuff like that at a fraction of the cost of somewhere like obviously yeah. Brooks Brothers or wherever you know. Definitely. But going back to your question about where I wouldn't like to shop, I hate saying negative things. I think every yeah. brand has got a good thing about them. And I don't want to make anyone feel no. bad shopping anywhere. But I do f- struggle with the white stuff. I, I, just, I don't go. Do you know what? I don't go. I don't go yeah, in there. I see. I, I never shop there for that reason. But I struggle to. to I find them in lots of people's wardrobes yes. and I feel like they kind of they they don't appeal to anyone they I don't know what they say like some some brands like you said with cos for you you appreciate it but it's not for you mm. I don't know who they stand for really like other than people that are really not sure and kind of as a bit of a backup but yeah I just I, I struggle to to find any good things I, in them. Yeah, I'm I very but I always find white stuff in people's wardrobes, always. Yeah. And ju- for me, it's it's very um, Portsmouth, and I'm not slagging Portsmouth off. What I mean is, <laughs> it, <laughs> there's no list list in Portsmouth. <laughs> let's just let's just bring everyone down, <laughs> alienate everyone. There's going to be a whole lot of people with us. <laughs> what what I, I didn't mean actually that. Well, what I mean is sort of like it's like you live by the sea the seaside in like the middle england type this is getting worse i'm digging a deeper <laughs> hole this is I, the... <laughs> do you know what i mean it's I, kind of like everyone dresses casually where you live you wouldn't wear anything that's you you know you just no one dresses no one like that everyone dresses yeah. really casually where you live that's it's that yes. i think it's one of them where you don't want to stand out i think it's kind of you know you they're sort of like background clothes when you think okay right. I really don't want to draw any attention to myself and sometimes I think it's a subconscious thing with people if they're not feeling that confident they kind of buy things that sort of mold into the background 
I, I call them like not bad, not brilliant. It's kind You've of helped me out here, Sally. That's yeah. what I was trying to get to without, but exactly. I've managed to yeah. get like, some people. Right. Okay, yeah. it's all right. It's not lovely. And I think with clothes, like even in our casual wear, we want to put things on that make us feel good. Even if it's just like your lovely necklace over a sweater or I think every day, even when we're casual, to put something on that makes us feel, uh, you know, uh, good is, yeah. is what we should all be aiming for because life's too short to wear clothes that make us blend into the background or make us feel like we're in pause. <laughs> I've got nothing. Oh, just do nothing. Yeah, we are joking, by the way. That just do nothing. I mean, the sh- yeah, hang off you not well. All of those things. It is it is for places where people just dress super super casual. That's what I always think about it. And you know, it's like it, it's almost home like loungewear type stuff. Yeah, unoffensive Hats and everything. And just yeah, not for me. I'm yeah. sorry, not, not for me. I'd take M and S. Uh, yeah I would I would definitely so I was just going to finish off on um Love Island because I don't watch Love Island I've never watched Love Island I'm actually quite proud of that I'm probably too old anyway for Love Island obviously so now they're going to cater to pe- for people like me by creating this is the word on the street a middle-aged Love Island and I read a hilarious article about this by Lucy Mangan I think it was in the Guardian and I was literally cracking up but she said what will it actually be like if you can imagine just a few soft-bodied people who are really polite to each other saying would you like a cup of tea and (laughs) and then they all try and get into a crime drama together (laughs) and (laughs) and they only actually have sex if they really 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 can be bothered and they're not too tired (laughs) that sounds about right I'd say (laughs) (laughs) I, I quite like the idea of it. I just hope they don't, I hope they do it in a body positive way though and don't get, you know, like people that are all stick thin and buff and you yeah. know, look like you've won them in a raffle, the guys. Um, yeah, let's hope, let's hope they do it in a way that they bring in personalities regardless of looks, I'd say, because that would make it far more interesting. I have to confess, I have watched Love Island in the past. It's, it's, uh, it's on at the moment, but I'm not watching it at the moment. But um I have watched it in the past and with with my daughter, my teenage daughter, and we sort of talk about it. But I think it's not I don't think it's a really good message at all that the way I mean, they're all really, really thin. They're all, um, you know, all the men have got buff bodies. And I don't think that's really realistic or, you know, aside from everything else that goes on. But, um, yeah, so let's hope they do it. And it's, you know, it's quite funny. I, th- I think they'd have to make it funny. I'm just trying to think, you know, oh, they've got to make a good television. We've gone back in a, in a circle now, you know, like The Apprentice, they're making good TV by making all these people assholes, really, you know, a lot. Yeah. Of, and that sort of makes the audience interested. So how are they going to run this middle-aged love line? And I think it's, it'll be fascinating. Yeah. I think it, it could make really good television. And, you know, they've... It, it is completely non not inclusive love island the one at the moment but that's that's sort of its thing isn't it and that's yeah well i think that's it people don't want to that that's what they are compelled to watch i suppose but i don't think it's a good message for you know with my teenagers i'm always talking about the fact that it's not a good message and it's you know most people don't spend you know 10 hours in the gym and have like six packs and that sort of thing um exhausting yeah. I mean it must be like to keep up to those standards you know when, when I was on the dating scene and you as well probably Sally in the 90s it wasn't it wasn't like this it was like a, you know particularly the no guys I think they are grooming like uh, as in you know being well groomed I think if if I look at the amount of stuff's out there for you know the you know the whole contouring of the makeup and all the other processes that females put out there that they go through I mean we didn't do it in the 90s you know I put you know a bit of mascara and lipstick and I would go out the the door but I think and you know there were people that did wear more makeup but I didn't it wasn't such a general thing I think all the hair extensions all the major and the men were just like a bit splash of links Africa a bit of hair gel and that's it job done yeah I know I just I think there's uh, 
I, there is a lot of pressure now about looking a certain way. And also, you know, things like having your nails done and that. It's just, I, I, I think people have to take out of you know, looking good. Um, obviously, it takes a bit of effort, but I don't think you need to, you know, it doesn't have to, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be all consuming if you don't want it to be. You know, I think you shouldn't feel pressured to have a salon blow dryer or a full face of makeup or you know I think you have to work within the remit of what you've got when I did my styling course which wasn't a particularly good styling academy necessarily but um the the lady that took it said oh you must always paint your nails and um otherwise you know you're really letting the side down amongst other things and um, I was just like, well, that's not really going to work for me. She clearly doesn't do as much washing up and, you know, general household jobs. Nails my, I have My nails are clean and they're tidy. But if I painted them every day, that's all I'd be doing. So I think you have to take what works for you out of it. You know, I love wearing lipsticks. So if I want to dress up a bit, I'll put on the bright lipstick. I mean, clearly I have to wear makeup now. I'm 50 um, most of the time. But um but I don't feel like I, you know, I don't feel pressured to have to do certain things or have my hair blow dried. And I think that's what people should take out of it. You know, I think you have to find a routine that works for you, a marriage of, you know, looking good and feeling good. Feeling good, but just not having that pressure because it makes other people just feel less than. They're not yeah. good enough because they're yeah. not doing. I mean, that's the danger. So yeah. actually, you know. The dangerous meant that it, there are teenagers around just feeling like, oh, I, I don't have this, you know, cas these cascading locks and these this like washboard tummy. I mean, it's just all, you know. It's social media, isn't it? I'm, I'm so thankful that we didn't have social media growing up. Because even now, you know, as an older woman, I, you can get sucked into a hole of looking at Instagram and looking at people's lives and looking at their wardrobes and, and thinking, oh my goodness, like I haven't got any clothes or, you know, I don't look like that. Or, and I think you can take a deep breath and put it down and go away. And and I, but I think with teenagers, it's part of their lives. So um, yeah. You know. I know. And it's not, it's not good. It's not good. Not ending on a very positive note, but I will, the positive note we're going to end on is let's, let's look forward to middle-aged love island because maybe that yeah. will have a bit more realness yeah let's it. hope so and and maybe a lot of people that are not frightened to say what they think <laughs> yeah because these <laughs> people things up a bit exactly people who exactly because they they are willing to say what they think they're not sort of so concerned with how they look and all of that stuff so actually it could be really interesting so let's have a look out for that thank you What's Sally so face, much Lisa? thanks for joining me <laughs> okay yes. thanks for having me bye bye